Hey, what's up, guys? It's Don Quixote for FX3.com. Welcome to another amazing Photoshop tutorial. Today, we're going to create a 3D text in Photoshop, use different materials to texturize the text, and incorporate the 3D object to an existing image. First, I'd like to explain how 3D works in Photoshop and how you can convert layers into a 3D object. So what I have here, I have a text layer which I can edit. And what I want to do next, I want to convert this text layer into a 3D object. For that, I want to open the 3D panel which can be found under Window 3D. And here I have a couple of options. As a source, I can select a layer or a path or a selection. And I can create either a 3D postcard, which is a 3D object without any depth, thin like a postcard. I can create a mesh from preset and use a sphere or a cube. And what I also can do, I can create a 3D extrusion, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So hit the create button. And here we go. What Photoshop did, it converted the text layer into a 3D object and added depth. First of all, I want to select the current view. We have a couple of layers here in the 3D window and one is responsible for the current view. And in the 3D mode, you'll find a couple of 3D navigation tools. I select the first one, uh, which allows me to change the actual view and to understand the shape of my 3D model. And I instantly see that the depth of the text is too strong. So select the FX ray layer within the 3D window, which is actually the 3D object. And in the property window, you'll find a slider, which is responsible for the extrusion depth. Let's decrease the depth to about 150 pixels. Back on the current view layer, I can again take a look at the 3D text. And if we zoom in closer, you'll see that the letters are very smooth, not very detailed at all. So I select the 3D object and in the properties window, I have a couple more modeling options. Under deforming, for instance, you can taper the extrusion positively or negatively or bend it on both axes, which is an interesting effect, but not for our purpose. But there are a couple more options. If I switch to the cap menu, I can also add a bevel to my text. And the bevel really changes the surface of the 3D object, as you can see here. And if I go back to the cap menu of the 3D text layer, I can also change the contour of the bevel to get some very interesting variations. But let's reset this for a second. I also have the chance to inflate the 3D text by dragging the strength slider within the inflate category. And I stick with 15% and add a simple bevel of about 6%. So that looks good. And we could actually do the same thing we did in the front for the back, but I leave I leave it like this for the tutorial. So we created a 3D text and we did a little bit of modeling. Next, I would like to change the light. Select the infinite light in the 3D window. And now you're able to change the direction of the light. You also get a feeling for how the shadow responds to the position of the light. You can change the color of the light, but I leave it at white. And you can also change the hardness of the light by adding softness to the shadows. The softer the shadows, the softer the light. Let's see. And once you've adjusted these settings, you can render the 3D object. I select the area of the image that I want to render, so you don't have to render the whole image. And press the render button. I'm not going to render the whole thing, I just need a rough preview to see how the materials and the lighting worked out, how the shadows fall, how the reflection looks like. And what I want to do next is I want to change the materials of the text. So within the 3D object layer, which I can open here, I find five material layers 
which define the material from specific areas of my 3D object. I select the front inflation and I could just simply change the color here, but I can also create a new texture. Let's say 1000 by 1000 FX ray texture. And I can edit this texture, which currently is just white. So I'm gonna fill it with a checkered pattern. You can download this pattern from our website and close the document with saving. This pattern was now mapped on the inflated surface of our 3D text. And if we zoom in, you see how the squares respond to the inflation. Besides the fact that I can change texture and color, I can also change this six parameters. I can set shining, I can add reflection, which you can see here and here. You can add roughness, I can add a bump map, a bump map is an easy way of modeling details. First of all, you want to have a bump texture. And I want to use the same checkered pattern I used for the inflation. So I right click here and select the FX ray texture, which we already created. Let's zoom in and increase the bump amount. Everything white is being pressed to the front, everything black to the back. Now we don't have a smooth, even surface anymore. You can also change the opacity or add refraction, but I'm gonna leave this for now and make a quick render. Let's zoom in and now you really see the bump. So I hope you did understand what a bump map does. If I would change the light, for instance, you would also see how the light changes within the bumps. So it's really a fast and easy way of modeling. I can either texturize one specific area or the whole 3D object. So besides the fact that I can define some material parameters, Photoshop also comes with a couple of material presets. Gold, for instance, or bricks, marble. Or we can use blue glass or grass. But what I want to do is, I want to reset this and apply the No Texture preset. So now everything's plain white again. Well, if you don't see these materials here, make sure to add them by clicking on a specific category. And if you don't find these categories at all, go to 3D, get more content, and you will be directed to a website where you can download all of these materials for free. Well, what we did so far, we created a 3D text, applied materials and set the light. Next, I want to focus on each individual letter and add some variations. So select the 3D object in the 3D window and go to 3D, split extrusion. Okay, I don't have any animations. And now I have a folder and in this folder, I'll find every letter separated into an individual 3D object. So let's go ahead and rotate and reposition those letters. I select the X and zoom in a little bit closer. And with the arrows, I can go back and forth. With a circle, I can rotate the letter. And let's find a position where the X is leaning against the F. And I really want to make sure that both letters do touch each other. That's why I'm changing the view. And it seems to be right. After repositioning, go to Coordinates menu and hit the Move to Ground button to make sure your letter still is on the ground and the shadows are correct. So the X is perfect. Let's continue with the R. I want to lean the R against the A and rotate it a bit towards the camera, move to the ground, and check if there's any overlapping, like here. So I'm gonna fix this. Okay, perfect. And finally, the Y, which I want to fall on the A. Okay, so I'm fixing here. And I think we're good. So we have the X and we have the R and the Y. 
The only thing that is weird now is the dash, which is hanging in the air. So make sure to select the dash layer and click on this icon and add a cylinder. Here it is. And now I'm going to reposition it, bring it right under the dash and make it even smaller and higher. Let's see, a little bit more towards the back, then move to the ground. And now we can rotate it randomly to make to maybe something like this. So this is our 3D model so far. No material applied yet. And now we're going to move this 3D text into a photo and make it look real. Open the image of the Hollywood sign, which can be downloaded on our website. And in this JPEG, you'll find a path attached. Create a selection out of this work path. Go to the layer panel and press Command J to duplicate the selection, which is the foreground of the image. Some of those plants, cacti, grass. Well, activate the background layer, switch back to the 3D text document, right click on the 3D object and duplicate the layer into the Hollywood sign photo. Okay, so I do have the 3D object in my document. And what I want to do is I want to change the current view. First of all, I want to lower the position, then change the angle so it matches the angle of the photo. And I think this works good. Let's do a quick rendering on that. Well, not bad so far, but we need to adjust the light. Try to orientate on the shadows from the Hollywood sign. And now we're going to change the material of the whole text. And to do so, I select all the materials in the 3D window by holding the Shift key. And let's apply a preset. I really like the Metal Copper 3 material. And I also want to select the front bevel material of every single letter and apply a different material, maybe the Metal Gold 2 material. And if we take a look now, you see that this kind of detail really makes the difference. So let me select this area and render it. I really like the shadows and I really like the position but what I don't like is that the gold doesn't reflect naturally. That is because the material doesn't know what to reflect. It doesn't have an environment yet, but that's something we can define. Select the environment layer and right here you'll find the IBL setting, the image-based lighting. And for now there is a gray texture with a couple of white highlights. And I want to replace this texture. So click replace texture and select the JPEG of the Hollywood sign. So now I set the image as the actual environment. And what I want to do now is I want to select all of the front inflated materials and increase the reflection to about 50% or 60. And let's do another rendering. And now you really see those reflections on the letters. And to adjust these reflections, let me for a second apply the reflection to all materials, maybe 85%. And if I now activate the environment layer and select the move tool, you'll find a sphere mapped with the actual image, which you can rotate. And see how the reflection changes while I'm rotating the sphere. I think that's a good position. And let's do another rendering. Let me take a closer look. You see how beautifully the environment reflects. Okay, so that is one way to texturize this text. You should also add a new empty layer and link it with a 3D text. I name it Shadow. Then take a brush with 10% opacity and paint a shadow at the bottom of the letters. And maybe decrease the layer's opacity. This way the letters look more integrated. 
I also want to show you how easily you can change the material now. Select all material layers and let's apply another metal material. It's called Metal Steel Brushed. And it is a beautiful metal material. But what I want to do is I want to remove the actual texture. So now the texture is gone and we have a plain color, which I can make a lot darker. But what remained is the bump map, which I can activate here, if not already activated. And let's bring the bump slider to 50% and the reflection to about 90% and the shining to, let's say, 70%. And if I now render the text, it will hopefully look like those balloons. Okay, let's see. Yes, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay, that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed our 3D beginner tutorial. My name is Dom Quixote. Take care.